interesting. A second data set that we just did um, right now. So uh, the problem with analyzing this thing is that you don't want to, m most people developing such methods, they're going to say, okay, how, how do I know what's right? And they do what I've just done uh, now, which is kind of validation by PubMed. You go and find papers that kind of support what you find uh, uh, in your analysis, right? But maybe, maybe we can do some bet something better than that. Maybe we can find a situation in which we know the ground truth. So I took actually uh, a knockout data. So this is a situation in which the ground truth is all there. We know exists. This is that somebody you know took a, a, a gene and knocked it knocked it out. Okay. So now we know exactly what the cause of the phenotype is, and we know exactly what the pathways that should be impacted. All the pathways that contain this gene should be impacted, right? So I know the, the pathways and I know the knockdowns. And let's, this is a public data set, it is in GO, GAC, 19.793. So, and that's the paper that you, you have there. So you analyze this data with IPA. This is what you get. You get a very nice set of, a very long set of pathways, list of pathways, and the top three have, you know, no connection whatsoever, and none of the truly involved pathways Containing by my DATA, which was the one that caused the phenotype, are placed anywhere near the top. Okay, not very good. IPA constructs all all sorts of nice diagrams, and and you do have my DATA here in one of these diagrams, but it's hidden in the middle of everything else. This is what you see on the screen, and my DATA is there. Okay, but you know I would be uh, hard pressed to <laughs> to 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 identify that as being the cause when I look at this kind of results. Let me show you, that, that's my D88 on, on this particular graph. This is another, the merged network diagram that IPA produces. And again, my D88, you know, trust me, it's somewhere here, I'm going to show it to you, but I would just, <laughs> you know, I would, I would argue that there is nothing that would, in this diagram that would tell me my D88 is the one, right? Okay, that's my DATA. But it's kind of immersed in a sea of other genes. Um, okay, here is what you get with, with this uh, pathway uh, um, impact analysis approach that I just described. So the top three pathways that you get are toxoplasma. Okay, so we calculate, this is the perturbation type of evidence. So we have a p-value for perturbation and a p-value for the number of differential expressed genes. So this is the classical hypergeometric. This is the perturbation analysis, and this is the global pathway, uh, the global p-value. So if you look at this, if you, the, the perturbation tells you that toxoplasmosis and leishmaniasis are the top, uh, the top uh, most impacted pathways, and this is not, the mineral absorption is not uh, uh, impacted with perturbation. And however, that is significant uh, with the hypergeometric, okay? So, but anyway, these are the top three according to the global PG and they are sorted now by, by perturbation, which is the new the new one that I'm trying to show you how, how that works. And uh, this is the same graph that I showed. This is the border. Um, it, I, I think that's at 1% after FDR. And those are the two pathways. So you see you have both types of both type of evidence, but uh, much more so perturbation than hypergeometric. Hypergeometric is, is, is low. Mineral absorption, you have a lot of hypergeometric evidence and no perturbation evidence, right? So it's clear that uh, they, are, they are significant. If you look at the global p-value, they are significant for different reasons. And guess what? You take, a, to, you take the top pathway that is identified by pathway express, this is what you see. It went and it shows you exactly the gene that is there. And it, this is the gene. It's, this is the, what you see on the screen, right? Uh, and this is me showing you the same way I did it for uh, IPA. And this is uh, when you look at um, uh, total perturbation, not only you see my DATA, but you see the, uh, the, uh, the, the mechanism that, that um, um, is uh, at play in this, uh, in this case, with my DATA being the source of, of uh, uh, all the action. So I, I think it's pretty nice. Um, Okay, the question is, okay, how, how come, uh, why, why do you get all these things? I was kind of, maybe, maybe we used IPA in the, in the wrong way. So what we did, I said, uh, let, let's just do a null hypothesis test. I'm going to 
take some random genes, assume four changes from, from three distributions. So this is a normal distribution like this, here from the tail, and here is a normal distribution on one side. And let's see how, um, what, what the software comes up with. These are random genes, random values. So everything that is identified as significant here is by definition a false positive. So this is what I got with IPA uh, versus pathway guide, side by side. So this is the most significant p-value, right? So <clears throat> um, with random genes, most, most pathways are not significant. So this is the threshold of significance. And with pathway guide, the most significant p-value, I've done many, many uh, runs, right? So this is the most significant p-value in every case. So it's not significant, not significant, not significant. There is only one case here, uh, here and here. So there are three cases in which one of these many runs was significant. But look at IPA. IPA, every single time, the most significant uh, p-value was way close to zero, uh, very significant. So that tells you, you, are, you have guaranteed false positive every single time with IPA. If that's the case, let's figure out if we can uh, find out how many such positive, false positive you, you have. So here I plotted the percentage false positive um, with, with the same data, right? So how many, uh, um, how many false positive, how many significant pathways you have in each case. And you see here you have um, one, two, three. So we did here, um, I think we did a, a hundred, no, we did 50 simulations at 5% at significance. So you expect 2.5 by chance and we got three. So we are right where it should be by definition. This is, this is what the meaning of the p-value. So by definition, we get three false positives. But look at IPA. IPA produced, this is the median. Uh, a median of about 30% in the best case for 100 differentially expressed genes. And if you increase the number of fake differentially expressed genes, it goes uh, up from there. So assuming that you have, let's say, 136 pathways in keg, signaling pathways in keg, um, that means uh, you, you are going to get about four, 44 false positive in every data set. So if you have about three, four, true positives, that means 90% of the pathways they are, you are looking at in IPA are going to be significant, which is consistent with what we have in these data. So I'm, I'm here, this is two, two slides left. Application of this technology, um, well, it can shorten the drug development cycle by allowing the rapid understanding of disease causes and mechanisms. It can help you understand the mechanism of action for drug candidates. It can increase the success rates of clinical trials by identifying disease subtypes and patient subgroups based on pathway profiles. So you don't do your just clustering based on gene expression. You can do, you can do this on pathways profiles, which is much more meaningful and, and um, uh, much more powerful. It can reduce the cost of drug development by identifying early side effects and drug interactions because it can tell you when you, when you study a drug, it can tell you what other pathways are affected besides those that you expect or you want them to, to impact, right? And finally, it can, uh, it can be used in drug repurposing. You can profile, profile a certain drug and a certain disease at the pathway level, and you can match those, profile, those, those uh, drugs that, that have an antagonistic effect with the effect of a disease on a given pathway. So you can, you can just shortcut the whole drug development by just finding new indications for existing drugs. So essentially, you know, if you want to think money, a, a, a blockbuster drug is by definition having a billion or more in annual sales. That means about 2.7 million per year. And the question is, sorry, per day, every day, uh, so the question is, you know, how many days does it take you to go from these kind of things that you get in IPA to, to these kind of things and identify the cause? Um, so essentially, this is a, an approach that, you know, tries to, uh, looks at the entire system. So a systems biology approach looks at the magnitude of gene expression, type and position of every gene, all the interactions, um, and um, we think it works uh, very good. So we have a number of grants of knowledge and a number of papers to, to point out, but I'll stop here and I'll be happy to answer any questions.